Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare Narayanam Namaskritya Narancaiva Narottamam Devim Saraswati Vyasam Tato Jayam Dhirai Reading from Srimad Bhagavatam, 2nd Canto, 9th Chapter, beginning from verse number 19. It's a description of answer to Parikshit Maharaj's questions by Sukhdev Goswami, where he related to the history of Brahma's vision of the Lord and his abode. And in the previous verses it described that how Lord was very pleased to see Brahma and he spoke to him. He was very blissful and full of love for Brahma and he touched him with his hand and began to speak in the following manner. Shri Bhagavan Vacha Tvayaham Toshita Samya Gveda Garbha Sushikshaya Chiram Vritena Tapsa Dustoshaha Kuta Yoginam The Supreme Lord said that O Brahma who has the Vedic knowledge in his heart I am very much pleased with you because you performed penance for a long time with the will to create and I am difficult to be satisfied by Hippocrates Yogis Dostosha Kuta Yoga So Lord is revealing his pleasure to Brahma that he is very satisfied and happy by the penance which means following the order of the Lord because Lord Vishnu or Krishna their duty is to maintain the universe and maintenance is done when people follow discipline so penance here means following the principles set by the Lord and opposite of penance is being independent minded and following the mind so that is the mantra of the modern society that they are not trained to perform austerities although there, is, there are more laws now there is so much law on everything. If you read law, it's amazing. And more and more, more and more law is being created everywhere, all over the world. Right beginning from the municipality, the municipality also has their law, which you have to follow. And then there is development authority, and then there is a district, and then you go to the state, and then the country, and then there are laws for the business, and laws for the traffic, and for this penal court. So there is so much, but there is nothing how to develop the human life. There is no law for that. This is actually the basis of all laws. Because if human character is developed, then you don't need so many laws. Now they have cyber law, then there is cyber crime. And after some time they will have space law because then people will start to travel to other planets. And they will do crime there also. And how to make a law, of course you don't know, under good jurisdiction it will come. <laughs> because law also has its jurisdiction. So they will have a very big problem. And India is also going to the moon. Just two days ago they also shot one rocket. They also want to feel part of the club. <laughs> so the real uh, principle is the principle which is set up by 
the supreme person and this is what brahma followed and therefore lord was very pleased and he was ready to reveal him the knowledge because brahma was not able to understand how to create so he said that now he will fulfill his desire and he calls him specifically veda garbha means one who has vedas in his belly in his womb so veda garbha signifies that you can have knowledge in your mind but there it does not stay long according to nyaya it stays for three moments any knowledge it does not stay more than that and then it is gone but if it is inside then it is contained so like it's on the hard disk it cannot be removed from there so that is the meaning of veda garbha and as will be revealed later on this performance penance <coughs> this is the <coughs> most important thing and penance here does not mean some abstract activity like in the kumbh mela there was one sadhu is keeping his hand up from last 12 years all the time is one hand is up so these are not the type of penance which is mentioned <coughs> here like hiranyakashipu was also doing penance but this refers to devotional activity because there is a statement in the upanishad yasya jnana mayam tapa <coughs> tapa also translated as penance but it also means knowledge so like we have nishinta tapini upanishad or gopal tapini upanishad so this word tapini coming from the same as tapa but there is no penance in the world in that upanishad so it means knowledge and it has knowledge about gopal or nishin so the word tapa really means knowledge and knowledge related with devotion so this is the potency of the lord which manifests as knowledge transcendental knowledge and then he says that dushto sah kuta yogina kuta means deceptive so people are performing austerities but that is not for the purpose of serving the lord so that is not the proper austerity and that is not pleasing to the lord or they are doing it for some material motive liberation that's why bhagavatam says dharma prajita prati gotra parma nirmat saranam satam that bhagavatam has the prajita kaitava kaitava has the same meaning as kuta here means deception so the dharma or the religion which is described in bhagavatam is free from deception and the same thing is spoken here because lord is not pleased in any type of hypocrisy he calls this as mithyachar ye indriyani sayam ye aste manasasana that he controls the senses externally but plans to enjoy through the mind and that is not pleasing to the lord so sri krishna chakrati thakur says that ved garbha iti sambodhayam vedan sanchareti so he is translating the word ved garbha this means name of brahma who has the vedic knowledge but he has not spoken the vedic knowledge to him yet so why was 
he calling him as Vedagarbha. So Sri Vishnu Chakrati Thakur says that by saying this, it is that he is transferring the Vedic knowledge to him. Otherwise he is not Vedagarbha to begin with. If he was Vedagarbha, then he would have known how to create. And there was no question of having confusion about it. So he says that Vedagarbhaiti Sambodhyam Vedam Sancharyati. Just by calling him by this name, he is transferring the knowledge into his heart. Tene Brahma Hridaya Adi Kavaya. And it is said in the very first words that he transferred the knowledge through the heart, Vida, to the Adi Kavaya. That is Brahma. Sisrikshaya hetuna chiram hrite na tapsa. And why is that? Because he has performed penance for a very long period with the intention to create and the desire to create. So chiram hrite na also signifies that he did not stop in between. Because people take some vow for some time, and now the Kartik vow. So usually Vaishnava in Vrindavan they do something extra. And then it is only for one month. And then they stop. Or people follow some other principle. And they get enthusiastic. And after some time they are not able to follow. So that was not the case with Brahma. He performed non-stop. Chiram Bhrita. And therefore Lord was very pleased. That means he was very determined and enthusiastic and patient. Utsaha Nishya Dhariyat Tattat Karma Pravadhanat. So that is the principle of success. He did not lose his enthusiasm and then think that why you have to do this, nothing is happening. He continued. So Lord was pleased. Dustosha toshaitum asakya sadhyak samyak. So he says that it is impossible to please the Lord by any deceptive mentality. I don't know why this word is Sadhyak is coming from there. It's not in the words. Oh, there is Samyak. Maybe in some reading it is Sadhyak. But we have both Sadhyak and Samyak. So it is not possible to please him properly with the deceptive mentality. So like this Vatsasura in Krishna Leela. He was a demon, but he became a calf. So that is, he was a coot calf. Not the real calf, but deceptive. He took the form. So then Krishna killed him. And usually it will look very um, irreligious that Krishna is killing a calf because this Putana was dressed as a gopi and he was sucking her breast and of course he also killed her but at least he was accepting her like a nurse but this calf he killed. He did not play with him like a calf. He immediately uh, recognized. So usually calf is respectable because he is called Gopal. He is the protector. But he did not do that. So he is not interested. You cannot cheat him like that. 
So he, that means what Brahma did was very sincere practice. And he was completely devoted. So therefore Lord was very, very pleased with that. And this is what is most pleasing to the Lord when one performs the act for the Lord's sake. You can do some activity by renouncing, but Lord always is more pleased if you work for Him. In Bhagavad Gita many times he says that Tayostu Karm Samyasat Karm Yoga Vishashyate. Krishna Arjuna asked many times that which is better, sannyas or karma? Which one is superior? So Krishna very categorically he says that Tayostu Karm Samyasat Karm Yoga Vishashyate. Yagyadana Tapah Karma Natyajyam Karyam Eva He Gitaan Tapan Sicha Pavnani Manishina So he says that this will not be given up, this will be performed. And Karmanai Visan Siddhim Astita Jan Karya He gives his own example that I am always working. Utsidayu Reme Loka Nekuryam Chayad Karma That if I don't work then everything will be demolished. So he is a very practical person. So because Brahma had the desire to create, so Lord was very happy with that. Otherwise one would think that why Lord is pleased, it was his desire. But Lord likes, he is happy when you do some good work devotional activity and for that reason this tapasya was very pleasing to him so those who are not performing work for Krishna they are not tapasvi they are not yogis they are doing independently it is not clear. So being pleased, he is asking this question now, I mean, he is speaking further to Brahma, that take a boon from him. He says, Varam varaya bhadram te varesham madhivanchitam brahma shaya parishrame kumsho madarshana vahihi. Said that please, O oh Brahma, you ask a boon from me, Varam Varaya, Bhadram Te. There is all auspiciousness on you and still you ask something from me. So Lord is so much pleased that he wants to give. So this is the symptom of love. Love means giving and lust means taking. So when love is there, then you want to give. Your heart is overflowing, it expands and it wants to give. So Lord was called in the verse number 18 as Pritamana, that his mind was full of Priti. So therefore he is happy to give. In love the satisfaction comes by giving, just as in the lust satisfaction comes by a messenger for one's own self. So Lord is happily, He wants to give. He says, Varam Varaya. He says, Ask any boon from me. Abhivanchitam, whatever you want. Why? Because He says, I am the Varesha. I am the best of those people who can give boon to you. And why He is the best? He says, Punsho mad darsana. He says the ultimate boon is that one has darshan of me. So if his darshan is the highest, then he is the one who can give that boon. Therefore he is Varesha. He is the best person who gives boon. 
ब्रह्मन श्रेय परिश्राम इस परिश्राम है और हार्ड वर्क विच रिजल्ट इन सम फ्रूट द बेस्ट वन कैन है मत दर्शन है दिस इज द अवधि दिस इज द लिमिट वन कैन अचीव मोस्ट ऑस्पिशियस थिंग मा माम वर वरम वांछित वस्तु वरे माँ मीन्स माम फ्रॉम मी वरम वांछित वस्तु वरे आस योर डिजायरेबल ऑब्जेक्ट विरुणु याचस्व यावत मीन्स टेक फ्रॉम मी आस फ्रॉम मी श्रेय परिश्रम है फलार्थ के प्रयासों मत दर्शना धीरे से दैट द Ultimate beneficial thing as an outcome of one's labor or endeavor is that one sees me. Mad darshan ana mad darshanad anyasya falasya mad bhaktayil agrahapvaadi because my devotee does not want anything else. So when Lord Narsing Dev appeared to Pralad. And he also asked Pahlad that you ask something from me. So first Pahlad refused to ask anything, saying that this asking is a business. It's because I do something for you and then you reward me, and that is a business. This is how business is done. Because in in business you buy somebody's time for a certain period. You pay somebody eight hours a day, and then he is under your control. So he will work for you. The people go in the time serving there. So that service is actually for the exchange of money. That I give my time to you, and you have to pay me this much. So that is not bhakti. Pralad said that you are my lord and I am your servant and we don't have any business deal. So why are you asking me like this? Because once you pay, then you are, you have nothing to do with that person. You can go wherever you want to go. So devotee is not interested in that. So it says mad darshanad anyasya falas se mad bhaktayi angraya. But my devotee is not interested in anything because if Krishna is Varesha, he is the best of giver of the boon. Then why ask for any other boon? Because whatever he is going to give will be less than him. So why not have him? If you own some object, then your value is more than the object. So whatever you are going to give, it is what you possess. So why not get the possessor himself? That is intelligent. So therefore, he says that they want my darshan. And Vamana Dev became Trivikrama and measured the whole universe in two steps. Then, after that, he told Bali that now you fulfill my third step. And I have measured everything. So where do I put my third step now? So Bali Maharaj was very intelligent. He says that because I was the owner of the three worlds, so my value is more than that. So you can take me for your third step. So then Lord took third step on his head, and then that's why he asked his servant that now you tie him because he has become my slave. So he was tied with the Nagi Pasha. The snake ropes, and then Bali Maharaj's <coughs> followers they were wanted to attack Vaman Dev because they could not see that their master is being tied. First of all, he is strict, and now he is being tied like a slave. So Bali Maharaj stopped them. He says, "No, don't do that because I have lost myself." So then, Lord Vaman Dev was very pleased, and Prahlad Maharaj appeared there. 
So this was the greatness of Bali that he surrendered completely. So here also the devotee is not interested in anything else from the Lord because if Lord himself is available then what is the need for anything else? And this word mom also refers to Krishna himself and not to any one of his avatars. Then he says, Manishita Anubhavayam Manloka Vilokanam Yadupsrutyarahasi Chakartha Parmam Tapaha says that indeed it is by my desire that you have seen my planet. Manishita Anubhavayam. This is the outcome of my will or my grace because you had performed great austerity while hearing these two words yad upshrutya rahasi in the solitary place Brahma when he heard these words tapa there was nobody else there and when he had performed tapasya then also there was no one else so this word rahasi is up to be applied on both sides. In Sanskrit there is one uh, principle which is called the Heli Deepak Nyaya. That you have only one candle. So you put it on the threshold, it will give light outside and also inside. So sometimes there is one word which is applied before and also after both. <coughs> so Yadupsu. Upsrutya Rasi, that what he heard in a solitary place, and Rasi Chakart Parmantapa, and he performed <coughs> studies in the solitary place. So the meaning is that the mantra has to be given not publicly. That's why mantra is called mantra. Mantra means the secret. Like in the in English they have this word Mandarin. This Mandarin comes from the word Mantri. This comes from the word Mantra. So Mantri means minister. Minister is another word coming from the same. So that, that means a confidential person. Because with that you do Mantrana. Mantrana means confidential consultancy confidential talk that is called mantrana so mantra also means whatever is the essence of your confidential talk that is also called mantra so there is a saying in niti shastra sadvi mantra sadvi karno vibhidyate that if mantra goes to the six ears then it loses its value So mantra should be only in the four ears, one who speaks and one who hears. And six ears means third person, then it is gone. Then you can tell the third person, don't tell this to anybody. And he's going to tell to somebody else not to tell. <laughs> and this not telling parampara will continue <laughs> till the whole world knows it. So, sadhvi karnai vibhidyate. Therefore, mantra is called mantra because it is a secret not to be told in public. So that is the meaning, yad upsrutya rahasi, what he heard secretly. And then it also means that whatever <coughs> spiritual practice you do, do it secretly. Don't make a show of it, that I am chanting these many rounds and how many are you chanting. <laughs> <coughs> this, is, this is the big talk. How many rounds you chant? 
So here it is Rahasi Chakartha Paramam Tapan. He performed his spiritual practice in isolation. So that is very important to keep your spiritual practice secret and not to reveal it to anybody because once you reveal then you lose then it loses its importance so Jiva Goswami also writes this in Bhakti Sambhava towards the end I think the last one is here so he says yeah, he's saying not, not to reveal it even to one's guru yeah he says this has to be just with you and the reason is that when you reveal, then the tendency is actually to feel proud about it. Because if you are revealing, that means you have something to reveal. If it is something ordinary, then what to reveal about it? If you are just eating dal rice, you don't go and tell your neighbor you eat dal rice. If you eat some cake, <laughs> then you tell that you ate cake today. Or pizza, yes, with some special topping. So if you have something to say, then you you reveal it, and because you have something to say, that means you are already feeling the urge to speak about it, which means you are feeling something superior. So then it loses value because the whole spiritual practice is not to make you feel superior but to make you feel what you are, not more, not less. And then the other person will also talk about it. And if it is really good, then he is going to broadcast it. And then people will have respect for you. Because you are doing something, you are fired up, or enthusiastic, practicing. So then slowly you will lose practice. So that's why it has to be kept secret, not to tell to anyone. That is the significance of the word Rahasi. Yeah. So Sri Vishnath Chakurti says Manishino Bhavo Manishita Pandityam Tasya Ayam Anubhava Vinjaka. So he's giving another meaning to this. He says, Manishi, Manishi means intelligent person. And the quality of intelligent person is his intelligence. That is called Manishita. And this is the indication of intelligence. What is the indication of intelligence? Mama loka av lokna. That one can see my planet. So because Brahma was able to see Lord's planet, means he has used his energy, his time properly. He utilized it to perform penance to please the Lord in such a way that Lord revealed his own planet to him. So this is the intelligence. Esa buddhi matam buddhi manisha cha manishina Krishna says this in 11th canto that this is the intelligent of the intelligence of the intelligent and wisdom of the wise that by using this temporary material body one attains me. So this is the only purpose of intelligence, why God has given intelligence. Otherwise by this theory of evolution, they cannot really say why human beings have evolved intelligence the way they have it. It is not necessary. Because other beings, they seem to be more satisfied and happy and more competent to survive. The survival of the fittest does not match with the intelligence of human beings. Because human beings have only misused their intelligence to destroy themselves, 
It's not helping them to survive. They're creating so much problem, disturbance, wars, terrorism, diseases. And animals don't have that. They are not having stress or blood pressure. There are no hospitals needed for them. So that is not the purpose of this intelligence. It's something else. So it does not fit and why human beings have intelligence. Monkeys are also surviving like that. We don't have lust and greed like us. Because we are using our intelligence to hold things, to consume, over consume, and then create imbalance in the nature. So that is also coming from intelligence, but improper use. So he says, Manishitanu Bhavoyam Mama Lokava Lokam. And this actually is the real sign of intelligence that one works to attain my devotion, my love and not just make some arrangement for surviving here in this world. Yadu upsrutya rasi chakartha parmantapa Now we are using our intelligence not to follow. We are using our intelligence to prove that God is the creation of primitive man. And, and scriptures, they were just spoken by less intelligent people. Now they are not applicable. So Bhagavatam says that the real intelligence is just opposite of that. So therefore he says, Manishino bhava manishita panditim tasya ayam anubhava venjaka mama loka av loka heva panditim venakti natu bahu shastra adhyan adhyapanadi says that to see my planet that shows the intelligence of the intelligent person and not that somebody knows a lot of scriptures and is able to teach them. That is not the sign of intelligence. Of course, he is talking still good intelligence. Mm. Even that is good that somebody is studying the scriptures and teaching that. But even that is not counted as the ultimate use of the intelligence. Or to speak those who are speaking against scriptures and not following them. That is not intelligence at all. <coughs> Says Pratyadishtam Maya Tatra Tvai Karma Vimohite Tapo Mehridyam Saksha Dhatmaham Tapaso Naga Says my dear Brahma, I had ordered you when you were bewildered about your duty karma vimohita, when you are not clear what you have to perform because Brahma had the desire to create but did not know how to proceed. So then Lord had ordered him that you become qualified to attain knowledge by performing austerities because creation has to be done and not like Shiva also created. <coughs> For some time Shiva was also given the power to create and then he created all these ghosts and hobgoblins and pretas and bhutas. So then Brahma said stop. <laughs> so Brahma has performed austerities means it also signifies not to act frivolously. That whatever comes to your mind when you create. Now you create according to the Vedic principle. Surya Chandra Maso Dhata Yatha Purva Makalpya. He said that Dhata Brahma, he created everything as it was before. Surya Chandra Mani 
सन मून एट्सेट्रा यथा पूर्व एंड इट वाज अर्लीयर कल पे ही क्रिएटेड सो दैट मींस ही ही हैज टू फॉलो एंड दिस इज व्हाट लॉर्ड वांटेड टू सी वेदर ब्रह्मा कैन फॉलो मेटिकुलसली सो तपस्या मींस कंट्रोलिंग द माइंड द एसेंस ऑफ ऑल तपस्या इज कंट्रोलिंग द माइंड and then control of mind can be utilized for some frivolous act or for the sake of god so hiranyakashipu or the demons priest in the olden days they also performed penance and controlled their mind and that was to gain power and again exploit people or material things so. so brahma did not do that he was very obedient and this lord was pleased so he says tapo me hridayam sakshat says this tapo his penance is directly my heart so that then of course we understand that tapo here does not mean just ordinary penance but it is devotion because lord's heart is devotion and atmaham tapso na he says i am the atma the very soul of penance so therefore there is a statement in padma puran aradhito yadi hari tapsa tat kim na aradhito yadi hari tapsa tat kim that if you have worshiped lord hari then why do penance because what is the purpose and if you are not worshiping lord hari then what is the purpose of penance so the meaning is that the real penance is worshiping lord hari because if there is talk of penance in the scripture and he's saying if you worship hari then why perform tapsa tat kin what is the value of tapsa and if you don't worship then what is it? Well, the only possibility which remains is that the real penance real tapasya is devotion to supreme god and that's what it says tapo me hridayam sakshat so that's how the vedic scriptures they are not understood by people if they don't hear from the proper source because they will hear the word tapa and tapa means penance and then they start doing some penance so the real penance is that which is the heart of the lord and that is love that is devotion that is priti and he says that he is the very essence of tapasya atmaham tapso nah He also says, "Srijami tapse vidam, grasami tapsa punah, gharmi tapsa visvam vidyam, me vishram tapah." Says, "I create by tapas, <coughs> and I destroy by tapas. I maintain it by tapas, and tapas indeed is my potency, my power. So it seems like he is." just tapa personified so that's why yes gyanamaya tapa in the upanishad it is said that tapasya is gyanamaya it is the consciousness the supreme essence of the lord na kevalam adhunayav tvai mam priti अभी तो तपस है पूर्व अपीर्तिया नो लॉर्ड इज एक्सप्लेनिंग दैट यू हैव लव फॉर मी नॉट ओनली नाउ बट इवन बिफोर यू स्टार्टेड परफॉर्मिंग द पेमेंट्स बिकॉज यू ऑलरेडी फॉलो द इंस्ट्रक्शन वैसी तप तप इति यदच उत्सुत परम तपस चकर्थ कृतवानसी तव तपी तां प्रति मय एव आदिष्ट वेन यू हर्ड these two words tapa tapa in the solitary place and performed austerities he says that was also ordered by me on all the brahma had not seen the lord personally 
but it was Lord who had ordained him. Kada, when was this? Tatra, Tada, Swasti, Aram. That was at the beginning of creation. Tvai, Karmani, Kartavya, Arthe, Vimohi, Tessa. When he was confused, he was not clear in the act of creation. This was not known to him. So then, Lord has given him the order. Kincha tapo naam mamei vai. So now, now he makes it more clear. He says, this tapa is my name only. He says, this tapa which he is talking about is not different from him. He says, his very nature, his very essence, is he himself. He says, mama vidya shakti vritti vritya. He says, this tapa is actually my vidya shakti vritti. It is a manifestation of my knowledge potency. Tapo me hridyamiti. Therefore, he says that tapo is my heart. Jeevasya vishya bhog tyagayeva bhakti ranukulatvat mame ipsitam tyagayeva. So he says that my desire is that living beings give up their attachment to sense pleasures or material enjoyment and act according to devotion, which is favorable to devotion. So that is tapa. Ateva prasiddham mama vachanam. Therefore my famous statement is yasya ham anugranami harisheta dhanam sane. That when I bless somebody, then I take away his wealth slowly. So that he will perform tapasya and he will do penance. So people are afraid when they hear a statement like this, they become fearful. But these are the same people who want moksha. So moksha means giving up the whole universe. Right? It's not that you can have moksha and you can also have this material world. Moksha means giving up material body, material possessions, material existence. That is what moksha means. But if you lose little wealth, then you think that Lord is not happy with you. So you want moksha, which means losing everything material. But if you lose few hundred euros, then you think that your life God is not <laughs> God is not happy with you. So this does not make sense. So that's why Krishna says that when I bless somebody, then I take away things from him. I'm bringing him closer to me. You already heard that in the spiritual world, there is no maya, there is no sattva, there is no rajas, there is no tamas, or any of these manifestations. So he starts taking them slowly. Instead of giving you a shock, <laughs> he does it in quantas, in steps. So you get accustomed to it. Slowly, slowly, slowly. Then you will take away your material body. Then you become liberated. So doing penance means practicing this consciously. That it's not belonging to me. Everything belongs to Krishna. Everything is for him. I am not the enjoyer, I am not the master, so therefore Visha Bhogatya, giving up the sense pleasures. Tatcha tapo yadi mat prapti arthakam syat tadaiva nanyatha. So if this penance is performed only for attaining the Lord, then it is Lord's heart, <coughs> not otherwise. If you are doing it to achieve something else, then that is not Lord's heart. Tapso ahem atma mambina tapo niratmakam mirtakam iva kaminam sya. So he says that I am the soul of penance. And if one is performing penance for attaining something material, that then penance does not have any life, it is dead. 
It's like body and not soul because Krishna is not there in it. So he says that is Niratmakam. Without the soul, it is dead. Mirtakam, like a corpse, coming on. So who are these people who are having such tapas? Those who have material desire. Because their desire is not for Krishna. So their penance is dead penance. Yadyapi sisrikshos tavapi tapas tadrisham eva. So now he says that although your tapasya was also with a desire, desire to create, tathapi sisrikshaya maya eva pravartitvat. But he says that because I, the Lord himself, gave this desire to Brahma, so it was not some desire of Brahma independently. Tav tapsascha maya anumodhi tattvat, tadvidam tapo niskam kalpami. So he says that your penance was approved by me, therefore this tapasya was niskam without any material desire. Although there was a desire for creation, and because that was desire given by the Lord, so it is not material desire. Swalokam kalpam eva itihan swalokam chatvam adarshan. Therefore, I have showed you my planet. Mama tu ladni shakti pate vashik bhog tiyaga swabhavit. So then, if Lord is personified of tapsa or penance, then he also must be free from sense enjoyment. So he says, because I am the master of Radhini Shakti, the pleasure potency, and I am naturally renounced from material pleasures. And there is no interest. It is natural for him. Sadaiva Tapas. He says, therefore, I am austere always, because he is renounced from the any sense pleasures. Tapasvi Tihas Rajami. I create ten tapsas ishtali samarthya mameva kinchit bhavatu yitra So Sri Vishnu Chakrati Thakur says that one says that I create by penance, I maintain by penance, I destroy by penance. So this means that whatever power Brahma will get for creation, this will come by Lord's grace. It is not some independent power, but it is given by him. That is the implied meaning of his statement. So that later on Brahma does not think that he is creating and he has some power to create. So he says, Srijami Tapsai Vedam. I create by Tapsa. So he creates by giving his power to Brahma. So I will stop here. He spoke about <coughs> this uh, secrecy of the mantra or the spiritual practice. Where do you draw the line? There is the verse, Uhyam Akhyati Pechchati in the Parishamrita, the Parishud reveal oneself and be natural. Yeah, you don't have to reveal your spiritual practice, there are many other things you can talk. So, where, in, where does a practice or whatever become a secret? Well, it also depends with whom you are talking. If somebody is very close to you and is not envious, then that is another problem. If you are doing spiritual practice and it is better than the other person, then that person will become envious of you. It's quite possible. And we create obstacles, and that's why I keep it secret may look like that you don't even do anything. There is one story I read that there was one king and he had a wife who was very religious, devoted to God, always worshipping and chanting, doing kirtan. And the king never participated. And she was very much troubled by this, of course, for being wife in the olden times, she never dared to say anything to him. But it was 
her heart's desire that my husband also takes part in chanting and worshipping in this. But King never did it. So she was sad about it. But then one day what happened that at night when they were sleeping, while the king was sleeping, in the sleeping stage, in the dream, whatever happened, he said, Oh Krishna. And the wife was awake at that time and she heard it. So she was so blissful that next day she made a festival. Big feast and preparations and music and singing. So the king asked that, why are you doing this? What is the occasion? I don't see that there is any festival, Diwali or Holi or Gesera or anything like this. I cannot remember that today. So he said that today is the most happy day of my life. So he said, why? He said, because at night when you are sleeping, you said Krishna. Mm -hmm. So the king said that, oh really, I said it? He says, oh, I revealed my heart. How is this possible? I am keeping this secret. And I, I never wanted And then the king left his body. He says, it's not worth for me to leave. My secret is gone. And he died. Mother, she was a Wife, wife was good. No, 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 no. The king, the king. The king. He don't want to be a chance Krishna. He doesn't want to reveal the secret. He didn't want that anybody knows that he is actually such a devotee. Mm. That he is chanting the name of Krishna all the time. <laughs> Says, now my secret is gone. I don't want to live. So that is the height of secret. <laughs> so when it says so, in the, in the... So great people are like that. They don't uh, talk much about their spiritual practice. Unless some people are at equal level, they're confidential. And we discuss. And the purpose may be to understand if I'm doing anything wrong or I can improve. So that is a different thing. So that's why it is Guhim. There also it is Guhim in great confidence, not publicly. And it says in the Bhakti Sandhava that if one uh, discloses the secret that the fruit is lost, it means that practice has no more Shakti? Or? Well, the sense is this only because <coughs> there is no reason. Why, why would one like to talk about it unless I mean, there are only two purposes. That you want to ask somebody or you want to show that you are doing this. Otherwise, if I'm, I eat my meal, I don't tell that, okay, I ate two chapatis, I ate dal rice. Why am I saying it? What is the purpose of telling this? Oh, I slept these many hours. And why do you have to say? Unless I want to impress somebody that, oh, I, I ate 20 chapatis <laughs> and I was able to eat. 30 gulab jamuns. Right? People talk like that. You know, I went in this feast. Can you believe how much gulab jamun I ate? <coughs> Somebody challenged me and I ate 50 gulab jamuns. So why they are saying? Because they want to show that, you know, I can eat 50. Today there was a news, in the news there was a newspaper, there was a news that one student in Japan, he died while eating. Because there was a competition and I, I don't remember the dish he was eating, but he was a very <coughs> strong, burly, well-built person. And he would have challenged that I will eat this quickly or something. And while eating, something happened. And he was taken to hospital and he died. So this is just pride. Eating is not for dying, eating is for living. But people make eating also as something to flaunt your ego. So that can also become a more spiritual practice. And that's why it is warned like that. Now it does not mean that it is going to happen to everybody or everybody is like that. But when such warning is given, it's with this intention. And if you become proud, then Naturally, the shakti is gone.
like if Brahma becomes proud that I did such austerity and I was able to see the planet of the Lord and he will also do it. Because it's Lord's power anyway. Say that. Tapso me hridyam Brahma. It's significant that, at least at that time, there was nobody to impress. <laughs> it was just him, and it was only two words, you know. He hadn't even seen God. There was no uh, all kinds of promises that if you do this, you'll go to heaven, or by winter, or this or that, you know. It's just a vibration in the dark, you know. So there was, there was no possibility of him having ulterior motive, you know, in the act. Yes. That's why he's saying that uh, it was, uh, um, you know, it was a totally unpretentious. So he was immune to any <laughs> problems <laughs> of revealing to anybody, <laughs> become egoistic. He just what not? Because what is the? How can he become egoistic if we are the only guy living on an island? You know? <laughs> it has no meaning. You know? Ego is related to the I and my. <laughs> You are the only one, and this I has no meaning. The thing is, we're, we're um, so often unaware of our unconscious motivations, you know, why we do things. And so as soon as you advertise, even if your initial intent was, uh, you know, really to, to please the Lord, but as soon as you advertise it, you know, these, these unconscious forces start taking over, and, and suddenly, it's become something else altogether. So just like to give you a more vivid example that I think we are all familiar with this example that when some preacher goes to preach, especially a sannyasi, you know the experience of this. Then they are well dressed, they have their danda and they will ask, I have to sit on a seat and they will say, well I am doing this for preaching. I, mean, I really don't need it. And then they actually expect they will go with a few people if they are going to preach somewhere and he has to look distinct. So it is done. There people are even trained to do it. And the person, he will tell this, that actually I am doing it just because I want to preach the other people learn and understand. But then what happened that in the process, preaching becomes, preaching of, what preaching about Krishna? Right? They will say, I am doing it as a service to Krishna. But then after some time, this preaching, instead of Krishna, it becomes preaching about the Self. And then Self becomes more important than Krishna. So I remember distinctly that when the Russian devotees came first time to Vrindavan, this was somewhere, I don't know, 92, 93, something like that. Mm -hmm. So when they came, hundred of them, one bus load, then they were received because this was the first time that Russian devotees were coming. So everywhere they were garlanded and they were received very nicely mm -hmm. and everywhere you know, they were looked on because they, were, they underwent a lot of penance to remain as devotees in Russia, which was a communist country. So everywhere, even some Brajbasis were inviting them <coughs> and garlanding them. So somebody was telling me that they are accepting this honor because this talk was about humility and all. He said, well, this is service. Accepting this honor is also service. This was the answer. So accepting this honor becomes service, but then slowly what happens that this becomes your need. So mind is very subtle, in deviating, or you can say that Maya is very subtle. So that's why the warning is given. Good question. This is not in this situation, but in another situation. Some guru gives secret mantra. Hmm. Maybe some in this association. But he asks him, You must change this and you will be, will be great, powerful, and, and, and love to God. But nobody asks about it. He said, said about this. 
But next time she, he will come to the war and they become, you know, speak all people this mantra. Guru ask, what you do? I give you blessing, you so strong. It, now you it, it never come to God. It, I am maybe going to hell, but all the people know this mantra and go to God. And Guru ask you to come more progressive than I am absence to him. This is other situation, this of course, but what to do if some you know, secret mantra, what I know, know you have some Red Harami secret mantra with your Sampradaya, and maybe... Uh, so in their Sampradaya they keep it secret now, or they are singing it on the towers? <laughs> the followers of Ramana Acharya, mm. do they sing their mantras on the loudspeaker, or they keep it secret? What do they do? What? What? The followers, Ramanuja Acharya is the one who went on the tower of Sri Rangam temple and then spoke this mantra to everybody. But I am saying now the followers of Ramanuja Acharya, are they keeping the mantra secret or they are making it open? No, they are keeping it secret. So they are also following it. He was a special person, he did it. Mm -hmm. Because he thought if this is such a wonderful thing, why keep it as a secret? Mm -hmm. And then his followers are also following what the Guru said. Okay. Okay, understand. If, if uh, an individual is so uh, you know, transcendental that they can, uh, let's say, transgress you know, the, uh, the standard rule and yeah. not and not to be uh, not become pulled influenced. down into ego, you know. Yes. So that was he was a special person, but it's not recommended, and even he did not recommend to his disciples to do that. Mm. 